So now that we got the temporary used engine out of my car, the new engine's looking a little bit underdressed for the ball. And that's because all the bits and pieces I need to make it ready to put into the car are all on this engine. So we're gonna start stripping this engine down to get everything we need. So some of you already know that this was just a used engine that I threw in the car to get it running because I was getting ready to go out for a season of autocrossing for the first time in years, but I had problems with my old engine. It had eight three lifters, had a broken main cap, and every bearing was showing at least some copper, and oil pump was trashed. And I didn't have time to actually build a new engine and get it together in time for the season. So this engine had originally come out of my V8 project. It was an engine that was been sitting for many years. I knew nothing about it and hadn't ran for a long time. So we threw it up on the engine stand, dropped the pan on it, took a look. Uh, the bearings looked okay but the cam was trashed. Pulled the head and the bores looked okay. So we just cleaned it up. I threw my oil pan from my old engine on it. Uh, this has the factory special tuning style uh, baffle in it. And then we threw on my distributor, my oil uh, filter housing, my timing cover because this was in, from a 71, so the timing arcs were on the bottom here, and I wanted the timing arcs up here. And then I threw my cylinder head on it because I figured, what the heck, at least it'll give me a little bit more performance because this is a small chamber, large valve head that's been ported. So at least we'll pick up a few horsepower and maybe be a little more competitive. But it was just put in there just to get it up and running as a temporary way of getting it running until I could build my new engine. Well, now that the long block's done, well, I need this cylinder head. So we're going to pop this cylinder head off. And of course, it's going to have to go to the machine shop uh, for at least a minimum of, of a skim. But we'll do a cleanup on it, check it over. I might CC the chambers, I might do some touch-up work to it. We'll find out what it looks like when we get it off. Now this distributor has already been curved, rebuilt and curved to go with a 60 over, you know, nine and three quarter to one compression motor, but it was curved factoring in uh, the APT VP11 cam, not the 12 that I have now. But we're gonna go ahead and throw it in there. And unless I have any tuning issues, We'll leave that alone. Of course, why wouldn't I have tuning issues? Everything lately has been a tuning issue, but we'll see when we get there. So I'm gonna start taking things apart and we'll get it off. And of course, I also need all the backing plate, flywheel, all that, because all that's specific to the five-speed conversion. And once again, just like with the header on the last video, some of this stuff has been modified lightened or whatever and i'm not going to get into any of that right now we'll start we'll look at all of that stuff as we're putting all this stuff together in the new engine getting it ready to put in in a later video so if you guys would like to see me actually do a separate video on stuff like the header and how i arrived at building what i ended up building and the intake that i built and all the parts like this that i've modified that all have to do with the engine to, for losing weight and trying to gain a little extra performance just let me know in the comments below and we'll do it as a separate video rather than just showing you as we're going i have a tendency to not like using power tools when stripping anything down especially impacts because you never know when you're pulling threads and stuff but these little battery powered um, ratchets aren't bad because you can still feel them and they do speed up the process quite a bit. Now the starter, of course, you gotta need an extension to get back in here to reach that bottom bolt and then you can just 
get it started and then I did have a high torque starter on this before and I would like to have kept that but the bendix had come apart on it just as I pulled the engine out and um, I didn't want to spend the money on another one and it turned out that I, that I needed the extra weight of the stock starter up on the right front corner to help balance the car out anyway so I ended up leaving a stock starter on it. So that worked out. See if this will come off without another wrench. And of course this is the Datsun 280Z five-speed gearbox and this is one of the later ones like 82 to 84 range so it's got the point 7.9 overdrive in it instead of the 0.84 which is really nice but I don't necessarily recommend the later gearbox if you're on a completely stock engine especially if you're on one of the later low compression engines because it'll feel really lazy when you drop it into fifth gear on the highway. But if you do have a slightly modified engine or an early engine, they're not they're they're a little nicer to when you can find them. Of course, all of these Datsun transmissions are starting to get difficult to find, and the prices have been going up on them quite a bit when you do find them. So now there's supposed to be two more bolts down here, but evidently. I didn't put those in when I did this because I really didn't expect this engine to be in here very long. So I guess I just left it off. So those of you that know the five-speed conversion kit, you'll know that this is not how the backing plate comes. I have lightened that a little bit. And also I have lightened the flywheel quite a bit beyond what it would have been in the kit. Because in the kit, it's turned down smaller to fit the different ring gear for the conversion, which makes it a little bit lighter. But now this thing's down to about 15, pounds, 10 ounces, I believe it is. And I may have to take it in and have it surfaced here because as you can tell, I, uh, I beat on it a little bit. But hey, that's what I built my car for, to beat on. So that's what I do. So now that we got everything off the back of the engine, time to get the cylinder head off. We now got everything stripped off the engine that I'm going to need except for the actual motor mounts there. And while we're in here, we're probably going to end up cleaning up the engine compartment a little bit. This is, um, I've already wiped it down just a touch, but it is getting to be a bit dirty. And I might, while I'm in here, get rid of some of this excess wiring. Because this thing years ago when I put this car together the engine wiring harness was hacked up on it and I had spliced together bits of two harnesses to make everything work and it's been fine for uh, 25 years now but I've also added all of this wiring here for the headlights which I do have some issue with I think one of the relays may have died on me but then a lot of this other wiring back in here was actually for electric fans that I ran for a while trying to see if I could take the engine driven fan off for autocrossing and it never quite kept it cool enough. And I left all the wiring in there in case I decided to try it again 
and I never have, so I might go ahead and get rid of that stuff. And then that is there for the MSD box, because I added an MSD box mainly for the rev limiter. But once I switched back to points in the engine, it was running on. And I had to put that in there to stop it from getting back feed from the coil to the coil and keeping it running. That's one of the solutions that they say to do through MSD. All right, so we got the head on the workbench, got all the valves out of it. Taking a look at it, I didn't expect that I would have to do a whole lot to this other than skim it for flatness and for prepping it properly for the type of gasket I'm using because it doesn't need to be quite this rough for the, for the uh, MLS gasket. But as I dug into it and started really looking at the valves here, I don't know if it's going to focus well enough, but the surface of the valves here is a little bit on the rough side where some material is starting to transfer off of here. So I might end up going ahead and saying, let's go ahead and throw some new exhaust valves in it because I'm not sure if I want to, we want to cut these again or not because the, like this one's pretty decent, but some of the other ones are a little thinner around here. But I also ended up finding that I got a little bit more wear in the valve guides than I was expecting to. But I actually don't remember on this particular head if I was already somewhat loose, but still within saying we're okay or not. Um, because I keep remembering my last head where we had done valve guide work to it, but that one cracked. So this is actually a replacement head for me. So we're going to get this thing, finish cleaning it up, get it up to the machine shop. I might end up ordering some valve, exhaust valves for it. Send it up there, get all the, the seats touched up. Crack check it, make sure it's good to go. Resurface it. And then we'll, when we get this back, we'll start moving forward from there. So I got the cylinder head dropped off at the machine shop. Hopefully I'll have that back next week. But while it's up there, I started cleaning up on the inch compartment and we got all this excess wiring from the old electric fans out of the way. I do believe I still have a few bits of wiring. I think this is for the fans too, but I got to trace it back to make sure. And I know I got a couple come on up here from a override switch. And once all that's taken care of, then I can tidy all this up but I've been scrubbing and cleaning, spending several hours so far, just cleaning all of the muck and grime and out of the engine compartment, the cross member, the transmission tunnel, all the floors, everything all the way back to the gas tank. Because believe it or not, this old used engine I had in there was um, leaking a bit of oil and blowing some out the breather. So it kind of made a bit of a mess of the car while it was in there. And speaking of the old engine, I got all of the bits and pieces I need off of it for the new engine. They've all been cleaned up. I got them painted, ready to go. And um, next time we'll be starting to put the new engine or finishing putting the new engine together, getting it ready to put in the car.